My name is Dr Jane Freeman and I'm part of the Healthcare Associated Infections Research Team which houses scientists and medics from the NHS, the University of Leeds and Public Health England, all working collaboratively on a variety of projects around healthcare associated infections. A large part of our work is investigating the gastrointestinal pathogen Clostridium difficile. This is a major cause of diarrhoea, particularly in elderly patients who have been on antimicrobial therapy. It causes a spectrum of disease from mild self-limiting diarrhoea to life-threatening pseudomembranous colitis, toxic megacolon and even death. Our gastrointestinal tract holds a vast population of commensal microbes performing various beneficial functions. One of these is to protect us from pathogens. The huge bacterial community forms a barrier to invading pathogens by competing for space and nutrients in our gut. This is called colonisation resistance. If that barrier is compromised in any way, then there is the potential for pathogenic bacteria to gain a foothold and cause disease. This is what we believe happens in the case of Clostridium difficile infection. Antimicrobials that may be given to treat, for example, pneumonia, also reach the gut and have an effect on the microbes living there. In effect, they can blast holes in the wall of colonisation resistance. C. difficile, which is ingested as hardy spores from the environment, then has the space and nutrients available to germinate, proliferate and cause disease. It's a particularly debilitating disease affecting a vulnerable population and our work here tries to look at several factors that may be involved, some of which are the role of antibiotics in predisposing individuals to C. diff infection, the role of the gut microflora in preventing it, new treatments for C. diff infection, the role of biofilms in the disease, recurrence, and we also perform C. difficile root surveillance activities, examining the epidemiology and antimicrobial resistance of the organism. To look at these areas, we use an in vitro human gut model that allows us to mimic the behaviour of C. diff in a gut reflective environment. The experiments run for 12 to 15 weeks at a time and require daily sampling and sample processing. Because the gut microflora and C. difficile itself are obligate anaerobes, we require a reliable anaerobic atmosphere in which to manipulate and incubate them. The workstations that we have here are spacious enough to allow us to work in them for several hours at a time in relative comfort, as well as housing all the technical equipment that we require. We also do a number of experiments looking at C. difficile germination and growth rates and the development of antimicrobial resistance. We are able to introduce equipment, such as this orbital shaker into the cabinet, to allow the whole experiment to be performed in the optimum conditions without introducing air at all. Here in Leeds we have five anaerobic cabinets supporting a significant number of projects and surveillance activities on C. difficile and the gut microflora. Some of our workstations function almost exclusively as incubators for very large numbers of agar plates. Again, because of the space and functionality of the workstations, we're able to incubate the plates in well-maintained and monitored conditions. Reliability, versatility and space are the significant benefits of the workstations in our work on Clostridium difficile.